only destroyed certain parts of the game. Um, do you think, in your opinion, that it'll cycle back to pitchers going set, starting pitchers going seven, eight innings like they did way back in the day, or is that gone? Uh, it's funny you ask me that question because I was just talking about it with my father-in-law this morning. And we're talking about Robin Roberts, the late, great Phillies pitcher, the Hall of Famer. And as my father-in-law said, you would be surprised if he didn't pitch a complete game. And unfortunately, I think it's a thing of the past. I don't think they're ever going back to it because even though Robin Roberts uh, could go nine innings and many pitchers of his day could go nine innings or eight innings, I think today, even though guys could do it, they realize that you get a pitcher seven or eight innings unless he's just going completely bonkers and you got to leave him in for a complete game it's better you get a fresher guy you get a more effective pitcher if someone comes in in the seventh eighth or ninth and and that's why closers developed and certainly middle relievers developed and and so i really think um you know guys can do it it's just that certainly you don't have a chance in little league i mean little league six innings you get the high school ball it's what seven innings you get the finally you get the minor league ball and then you start getting managed and, and they don't want you. They're paying you a lot of money. They don't want you breaking down. And and so before then, you really would have no reason to to have that kind of volume of pitches in in uh, in an outing. So I, I really think, um, unfortunately, because I like a guy in there for a while, but it's not going to happen anymore. I, th- I think I think we're done. Uh, you, you have to have a really uh, incendiary performance on a given night uh, in, in order to stay in there. Otherwise, I think they're just going to go with the fresh guy. But you can also really tax uh, some of these arms if you – like um, Jose Alvarado yesterday. I mean, th- this guy pitched uh, – what was it? Uh, 11 scoreless innings, I think, and finally he gave up one. They brought him back out for the next inning, gave up a home run to uh, Solaire, and, and, and that was that. So, you know, I mean, you got to be careful how you manage these guys, especially early on. Angel, do you have anything? You want to keep rolling? <laughs> uh, no, well, yeah, you can keep rolling. But for those who are watching tonight, by the way, I just had to flip it over to the live set because as we're having so much fun during the green uh, green room, we have five time sports Emmy Award winner Michael Barcano with us taking some time away from NBC Sports Philly tonight to jump on with us as we are watching the game as well live which is a great thing to have Michael on with us because he can give us not only the update perspective over from the studio, as you guys can see there. It, it's a great time to have I shouldn't all do that. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, either way, Michael, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Everyone listening around the world, we do appreciate it as well. And those who are listening on Sports Radio 102.9, the game, along with Amp Radio, we thank you all for tuning in tonight. And Mike, I, I, I want to ask because obviously you're born and raised in South Jersey, or actually North Jersey, and then you moved uh, around to South Jersey. Coming over to the Pennsylvania side of the house, has anyone ever wondered when, and I know you've covered Philly sports for many years, and we appreciate you doing it for, for us, for the fans, but has anyone ever said to you, why didn't you try or at least maybe attempt to maybe go with the Northern teams? Like the, we don't like to name the Yankees around here too much, but better, <laughs> <laughs> as the screen goes away. <laughs> but Sorry, I got a phone call. Oh, there it is. There we go. I apologize. I'm probably gonna get an. I'm probably gonna get another phone call because it was my wife, and I just hit the f. I just hit the fu button, as she calls it. So, so sorry, dear. I'll, I'll send her a photo of this. But I'm sorry, Angel. You were saying, did I ever what? So did you ever? Did anyone ever ask you how come you never went like north of the, of the city, like out to New York or New England or anywhere else? No, you know what? The, the way this business works, as you probably know, is you know you, you get the gigs when you can. Mm-hmm. And um, my I, I graduated Syracuse in 1982. I went down to Washington D.C. I was a I was a news assistant in NBC News. Then I went up to New Jersey Network, which is New Jersey Public TV. I started doing weather, and then I began doing sports, and that led me to Channel Three here in Philadelphia. In 1987, I was 26 years old. I did that for five years. Met my wife. Uh, I uh, I got a job up in Boston doing sports in Boston and sports talk radio in Boston. Did that for five years, and then my friends at Channel Three called me and said, "Hey, we're putting a band back together. You know, do you want to you want to come back?" And and that was Comcast Sportsnet. And so um, I I came back, and um, that was 25 plus years ago. So it was kind of in between. 
you know, I, I, I guess you can kind of say I've done New York stuff because I used to do the U.S. Open tennis. I, I've done uh, three Olympic Winter Games for CBS. So I've done a lot of national stuff. I've done I've done uh, I've done dog shows. I've done uh, U.S. Open golf. I've done a, a lot of. Now we lost Ryan. I, we've done a lot of stuff, <laughs> and and, and um, it's uh, you know it's been it's been very rewarding. But I never I, you know. I never really tried. I was so content and happy. And also, uh, as you may know, I mean, you have a family and you have children. My kids, my, my daughter was born in Boston when she was one. We came to Philadelphia. She's essentially grown up from from out of the womb in Philadelphia. My son was born in Philadelphia, grew up here. Um, my daughter went to Syracuse, which is where my parents went. And I went, she went to Syracuse. My son stayed in Philly, he went to Penn, graduated a year ago. So, you know, when you have the family ties, um, I, I just there came a point where I I never even thought about going anywhere else because I was just so happy here in Philadelphia. Ryan, now I got to repeat the whole thing. No, I'm I not going to do it. I heard Son you. of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I was I was doing these solo shot for you, Michael. So he, he didn't hear anything you have to say. But no, the funny yes. part is because you get to know you know, you know Philly. Yeah. You know exactly how Philadelphia is. You know how we are. We're very passionate. Uh, we waited forever, obviously, for the Eagles to win their, their first Super Bowl. We got, I was, I experienced it before I moved down here in Tampa. That was the one big thing to make sure that I was able to do so before moving down here. But we had the opportunity, obviously, to see the Eagles win again last year. Came up short, obviously, our other two teams as well, the Phillies and the Philadelphia Union. You know, as, so as we flip from you being, you know, obviously being here in Philadelphia, has there ever been a point in time that you can remember, obviously, other than the Sixers and Flyers back in the heyday, that we've seen all three Philly teams and then all three just come up short at the end of the year? Uh, not, not to that degree. No, no, right. not like it was last year. Uh, you're talking about you're talking about the Phillies and the Philadelphia Union on the same darn day, for goodness sakes. And then, of yeah. course, you had the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Um, I know. In uh, in 1980, I think all, all the teams went to the championship round with obviously the Phillies winning. Um, there were there were some other years as well. I think I think '84 was a pretty good year as well for for Philadelphia teams. Um, but uh, namely the Sixers, '82 I think was a was a pretty good year. Yeah. But it's it, it's rare, you know, it's rare. And and uh, there's another Cincinnati hit man <laughs> killing me. Um, but but. Uh, but yeah, it, it's. Um, I, I think this has become, and that's the beauty of sports. It's the frustration of sports. But as long as we have some hope, that's the, that's the worst thing. If, if all hope is cut off, and there have been times when I'm thinking, you know, that there there really is no hope in this town for, it, during a particular time. I'm sure you felt it, and, yeah. and uh, you know, Flyers get bounced, Sixers get bounced, Eagles don't make the playoffs, Phillies don't have a sniff. They don't make the playoffs, and and then you look down the line, and there's there's the hope. Do, do do we have a shot next year or the year after? And you're thinking, no, we really don't. But guess what? In those years, stuff always happens, and that's the beauty of sports. That's why you got to play the games because there's always a year. Oh, Eagles having a down year. Boom, they make the playoffs. So they go to the, they what was it, 2008 or 2010? They weren't supposed to do anything, and they went to the NFC Championship game the year they. Oh, he may have frozen up. Uh-oh. Maybe the wife's tampering with his phone. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> maybe she, oh, there maybe we she go. hacked into his phone. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> they could have We can hear you, Mike. You'll come Hello? back here in a second. It says speaker off. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> now he turned everything off. He'll be back. I'm sure he's going to have to roll soon. So. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll bring him back. Duncan Dead, you guys can watch all the fine work from the Bleacher Report over on Nilfo. Uh, hey, uh, uh, okay, this is the last time. I'll tell you, we can do a 15-minute segment in about two hours. Just real quick, because I know you're going to have to leave soon. I want to get your thoughts. I said this the last two or three years with the Sixers. They have done nothing. I mean nothing to shore up their bench. The starting five is going to have to carry them all the way through the playoffs, all the way maybe to a title. Your thoughts on that, my friend? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, – I really think they're going to get past the Nets without too much trouble. 
I, I know a lot of people are like, oh man, with this team, you just you, you just don't know. But I really think they should beat the beat the Nets in five games, maybe six games. And look, the other team's trying too. The other team wants to advance. Um, the next round is likely going to be the Celtics. And unless something crazy happens, I know they beat them for the first time this season, the last time the teams played, and they needed everything they could. And that was, the game was here, and they needed everything they could muster to, to manage a win. The bench is, has been concerning. Um, Joel Embiid has been a beast. Uh, um, you know, I, I think with, with all of the weapons that they have, I think, that, I, I think they have a, a chance to beat Boston, but, but I don't think it's a good chance. I think the Celtics team has its designs on a championship, and I'm, I know you'll hear that from the Sixers as well, but I, I, I just don't, uh, I, I just don't feel whether it's it's the depth of this team or the lack of the depth. Um, if it's the way Embiid plays, I mean, how many times has he been injured in the in the postseason? Um, James Harden, who who I think is awesome, um, I, I think if if he's hot, him, Embiid, and um, shoot. Uh, the, you know the young guy with uh, the, what? What the heck's his name? You know, he's a, he, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, yeah, my, no, Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, Tyrese. Yeah. Ma- you can tell. You can tell I'm Eagles and Phillies, can't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And 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 you mentioned Tobias. I've never like Tobias is a former All Star, and to, uh, Phillies. No, that's five to two now. Uh, Tobias. To, Tobias. I, I I always feel like I want to see more from him. I don't know about you. The yeah. guy can light it up from three point range, and, and he just looks like he, uh, he, he's a deadly shooter. And then you just don't really see stuff from him uh, some games, and and you can't have that, man. You just can't have that. So um, you look at you look at what Boston brings to the table, brings to the court. I I really think they they are such a complete team, and uh, and their starters are, are devastating. I think it's gonna. I, I really think it's gonna be tough for the Sixers to get past them. But I, hey, that's why they play him. You don't know. I, I do think. Um, hey, Duncan, Dad. <laughs> oh, I can. You, fight. you know, Duncan, Dad. Yeah, you I know, sure bring do. Me, bring me some Duncan, Duncan, Dad. For goodness' <laughs> sakes. Cheese and crackers, man. Um, all right, it's the bottom of the fifth. I got. I don't want to go. Can we do this again? Yeah, we sure can. Yep. We Let's do it. Can. Just call me Angel <laughs> of Broad Street South. Angel. Wait, wait. Uh, yeah. Mike, before you leave, tell the folks yeah. what we're going to change the name to the show to. Oh, yeah, South Broad. There you this go. Angel Martinez and Ryan Neff on South Broad. <laughs> I like it. Until, until they said, until they say, shut the bleep up. It's going to be Broad Street South. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's good, people. No, South Broad. I like South Broad. Welcome to South Broad. It's it hard, man. Two words. <laughs> We're gonna. You know what I, mean? I tell you what. When you come back, Michael, we're, we're gonna change it for the one night. We're gonna I'll, one I'll flip, night. The locals and everything else. I flip all around when you come back. <laughs> you, got, you got it. You guys are the greatest. I, I really enjoyed myself. I wish I had more time. Thank no you, sir. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it. You got all it. Right. Talk to you soon. All Bye-bye. right. All right. Have a great night. <laughs> you too. <laughs> you too. <laughs> oh man, that was so much fun. Sorry, you guys, if I didn't get the comments in there, Sean. I did see it when you said, uh, "What's up, guys?" We're. Uh, we really need Tobias to, to be a solid contributor. You agree? Uh, we better see uh, playoff Tucker. So that Dunk and Mike, thanks for joining us, Dunk and Dad. Mike Klein over from uh, Philly to South. And uh, by the way, Dunk and Dad, check your text message when you get a chance. If you're still watching, Dunk and Dad, so check that one. I did see good friend Chris here. Hey guys, I'm watching. As soon as it comes back on the screen here. Hey guys, I am watching the Phils, and you all absolutely no move. No macho, no macho. Yeah, just incredibly disturbing <laughs> start, and it is. It, it is. It, it, it's unfreaking. Just, it's unbelievable, unstinking believable. And and it, you know, it's it's bad because it it's one of those things that you don't want to give up on the Phillies. No one is, and but we didn't see it, Ryan. And and the same way with Pittsburgh. I mean, every year. So the funny thing is, for those listening, once again, we thank you everyone for tuning in. Sorry about the start today, as. Ryan had Michael going in the very beginning. I didn't get a chance to start the show off. So we were talking in the green room. I will have to go back and post edit everything. So you guys didn't miss from the very beginning, but you can thank my co-host here for getting Mike on a roll. And, and then it didn't stop from there. So you, you guys can uh, thank Ryan for that one. But uh, thanks everyone for tuning in once again for Sports Radio 102.9 FM, the game, and also over on Amp Radio as we are live here tonight. It is 
Friday Eve, Thursday night, for those who like to take uh, to keep track of the days of the week. And once again, I appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. But no, Ryan, you know, you every year you talk about Pittsburgh, right? And you always say, well, we we won one, now it'll be one and one sixty one. But then you look at Pittsburgh, not bad of a start. But the Phillies, I think, are more surprising than anything else. And and I don't, I don't, I'm not surprised. Obviously, the Braves are in first. I'm also not surprised the Mets are up there. We eliminated both teams last season. So I'm not worried about where the Phillies are right now. Obviously, the Nationals are where they're supposed to be down in the basement. Uh, and those who live in Florida, you have to live up north to understand what a basement is. But it's like basically below the sand uh, if you can make such a thing. But, uh, you know, you look at the Phillies, Ryan. It, it is. It's been a rough start like Michael talked about not too long ago. Uh, the pitching has been, it, and depending on who you talk to, it's been either really good for some pitchers. They like the pitch clock. And some other ones, they say to get outwinded, as we heard him talk about earlier today, about yesterday one of the pitchers saying that he was outwinded, you know, running over to first. So has it been, and we didn't get the opportunity to get into it last week, do you think it's been more of a hindrance, I guess, with having this pitch clock? Or has it been one of those things where everybody just kind of continuously make adjustments to it? I mean, it could be a little bit of a hangover from what happened in November. Um but what, that's why I have an exhibition season to work out the kinks to, right. to get all this set. I mean, the, the, the pitchers report in February. Everybody else is, has to report by the beginning of March. And you, you, you sort of have four or five weeks to work out all the kinks. Um, so, you know, Philadelphia rode that wave last year. The, I mean, the fielding was horrendous. Um, they were outscoring guys. You know, the, the Phillies caught – red hot in the last third of the season and it carried him to the world series. So now we're two weeks in, but it's not that we're just two weeks in. You had four or five weeks before that to try and work everything out and get the kinks out. Now people will say, don't panic. It's only two weeks. Well, you don't want to dig yourself too much of a hole. I mean, I picked the Braves to win the East. We all know what the Mets do when it, when it boils down to crunch time. So, and right now, you sort of have to take a look at the manager and the staff and say, you know, what were you doing in the exhibition season? What, what, what were you doing during training camp? So, and then tonight, I think they're, what are they down, five to two now? Um, yeah, I mean, they've given up nine hits. Phillies have an error. They're down three runs. It's the top of the six. So you're starting to sort of like see a little bit of a pattern here. You know, if if their starting pitchers can't give you a good five to six innings, right? they're really going to be in trouble. Because it's like Barkan said, you know, I, that's why I was picking his brain, because he and I are old school. 20, 30 years ago, guys went the distance. They were in the hundreds on pitch counts. Now they got five or six days rest. But it's, you know, do I think the pitch clock has anything to do with it? No. No, I've seen a couple of people get busted on it. And they're, they're, some of the guys are still going to have to adjust. I forget what game I was watching the other day where guy was at first, first pickoff attempt, second pickoff attempt. He had a brain cramp, third pickoff attempt, balk, runner goes to second base. Again, all this should have been taken care of in the exhibition season. Just like with football, you have – You know, the exhibition season, it's preseason. You have preseason games to work out the kinks. So, you know, it could be a combination of a lot of things, but I just think, you know, look at the Tampa Bay Rays right now. They tied the Major League League record for the best start at 13-0. and You know, they seem to have it figured out. I know it's a long season, but, you know, the the, the Phillies don't want to get too far behind. You don't want to dig yourself a hole in April Correct. They better they better try and figure out something fast because you're starting to see a pattern develop and it's not good. No, it's not. And uh, Sean, our sports contributor, he says that they have to make adjustments to uh, have to make adjustments to it. It's early. No need to panic just yet. And and I don't I don't think you you you're going to hear some people on Philly radio obviously talking about that the Phillies. Not surprising. Either they're bums or something else because everybody likes to give up before they actually encourage these folks. But you know, either way, and I'll get back to the race here in a second, as you had just mentioned, it, Ryan. But and also, uh, Sean also states on the bright side, Harper is taking practice at first base so far, and it looks like it's it's bright for Bryce, and which is good. You know, good thing that obviously that Bryce Harper is it, he's almost to like where he, you know the the injury was supposed to be taking him out later on into the season, 
they have talked about maybe late May, early June. So it's nice to see he's coming back in mid-April. And they just need to take it easy. Obviously, it's our $300 million man. And and speaking about $300 million, to kind of switch real quick, Brian, $400 million that we see from Mike Trout over there in uh, in L.A. And it seems like ever since he got awarded a contract, he hasn't done much. So uh, um, as I go back to the Rays and we kind of flip back and forth here, is it then worth, when you look at something like that, obviously when Albert Pujols was taking over to the Angels, 10-year deal, lots of money that was posted that way as well, it, it just seems maybe it's just, is there an angel curse out there in Anaheim? Or is it one of these things that are just paying so much money to these guys that it really becomes ridiculous to have them in high six-figure salaries and then the performance is not there? Well, we see it time and time again, don't we, Angel? Or like, like even in the football Guy gets the big contract within two weeks. Guy gets hurt. He's out six, seven weeks. Uh, I don't know why Trout's still there, to be quite honest with you. I, I, you're not going to win a championship with the Angels. Um, they're another team that's been wild in the mire for like a long time. Um, I remember three or four years ago, I think the Yankees were trying to woo. I mean, he's from Jersey. So I just, is it one of those instances where, He's just collecting the paycheck. I mean, to be honest with you, the guy's been hurt a lot the last three, four years. He hasn't really played a whole lot of games. Right. So he just, for some odd reason now, ever since he got the contract, he just always seems to be hurt. So curse, I don't think it's a curse. I just think it's, again, you can, I can relate it to football where time and time again, guys hold out, they get that big contract, and then everybody comes out and say, you can almost see it coming something's going to happen now since they got that big contract and 80% of the time something always happens. So, um, you know, he's not getting any younger. Um, the guy obviously keeps himself in shape, but unfortunately the last three or four years, he just has a propensity for getting hurt. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either, but this next segment brought to you by two people here. One is Philly sports trips. If you guys want to travel travel with the pros and look at that crazy busy schedule right now that Vince has lined up, obviously, with the Phillies, soon with the Eagles, as we hope to expect to fill the house here in Tampa. When the Eagles come down, that should be a lot of fun. Ronnie Gent will be with us over there at Tampa Joe's. So it'll be a good time. Some other former NFL athletes will be there as well. So it'll be a great time over there at Tampa Joe's, as Mike Klein was in earlier with Philly to South. But this next particular segment, as we're going to get to the race here, it is brought to you by the Bleacher Brothers of A.J. Johnson, Duncan Dad, and the crew as you guys can catch all of their content over on the No Filter Network. Again, the Bleacher Brothers over on No Filter Network. Those guys win. And matter of fact, take a look at the tour, the spring training tour that they did. If you guys want to get some good, valuable content, it was a lot of fun. I know uh, Duncan Dad and I tried to get together a couple of times, but I, those guys were flying all over the place. But take a look at their segments over there at No Filter Network. And uh, it, it might sound familiar because there might be something coming up here with No Filter Network as well. But going back to Duncan Dad, as far as the race, you're talking about our own fire, 13 and 0. With basically, if, if you really want to think about it, Ryan, you're looking at their salary. You know, we all laugh, but they're like a dollar store, dollar express type salary because they're the lowest of all salaries in Major League Baseball. Yet Kevin Cash somehow or another has gotten it figured out. I don't know how he does it, but he's gotten them figured out 13 and 0. I mean, they, they bring in, I mean, their farm system is loaded. I'll say that much. So they do it right. Even with going on, if you guys have not been to Tropicana Field, and, and I'm not going to say too many bad things about Tropicana Field, because even though, yes, it's old, it's outdated, they've been going back and forth, whether they go to Ybor City, Tampa, and or stay in St. Pete. The place to me, it's, it's a weird, fun place because you can sit down and walk around the whole entire place if you want to because there's only one basically level being down there. But the Rays, somehow they do it right. Today, probably one of the bigger crowds that they had since their home opener sellout. And so hopefully the Rays will start bringing and filling up the seats, because I know the upper level in that bowl, it's kind of harder to fill in. But I, I don't know, Brian, I, I, I don't know what Kevin Cash has done. Obviously, again, 13-0 and 0 to start off the season. Yes, it's a marathon. We all know this. But it's quite incredible so far what he's done. And again, and I, I think their budget or their, I'm almost certain it's like some like $86 million or something. It, I mean, it's just, it's beyond low. But again, no super contracts. You, know, you, you guys, you have guys on this roster that play like a team, not taking anything away from any other major league baseball team. 
but somehow he's done it right. And so I, I don't know, Ryan, do you, do you know maybe what the winning formula is down there in Tampa Bay? Well, I, it's a testament to ownerships and it's a, it's, it's a testament to the coaching staff, obviously, and the manager and the staff that he's put together, you know, and sometimes when you have that, you know, that small market, you know, us against the world attitude, you know, and, and the team buys into that, this is what the result is. They obviously figured something out in March, maybe even before that. They came up with a plan. They've implemented it. Did anybody expect them to th- start off the season 13-0? and zero? Absolutely not. But it'll be interesting to see if they can keep it rolling. I, again, it's early. It's early on. You know, injuries could happen. You know, they could co- you know, go into a rut or something like that. Right. But for right now, they just seem to have the formula – um, and, and something's clicking between players and coaching staff. And again, when you have ownership that cares, you know, and they, and they, and they put that caringness into their product, this is the kind of results you're going to see. Me being a Pirates fan, they should, uh, you, know, uh, you know, start writing notes the way Tampa's doing it because for the last 30 years, the Pirates have done it backward. And, you know, I know they're 7-5. and five. I said they'd go 1-161. I was wrong. They're seven and five. I'm still checking the weather channel to see if hell's going to freeze over. So, um, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where they take this. Um, it'll it'll just be interesting to see if this formula continues throughout the season. Now, what's that other Pittsburgh team that's out there? Uh, the Penguins. <laughs> Thank God they are out of it. For the run that they've made, and listen, and, and I will tease Penguin fans. Obviously, they know how to do things right. And and kind of shocking, honestly, that the Pens are in it this year in the NHL playoffs. But, I mean, one heck of a run that they've done for many, many years. I mean, you're going back to, what, 05, 06. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's amazing to go that long. And, and most of the time, pretty deep as far as the NHL playoffs, which is kind of hard to do. Um, but, again, Pens are out, which it's kind of kind of surprising. I don't have to hear Sidney crying Crosby anymore, and that's great because you can put him away, at least on the shelf, until God knows when. But you know, either way, and then obviously the, the, the Flyers, who knows, as you brought up earlier, uh, there could be a good possibility that they'll be, uh, I think, hopefully sold, but they're not, obviously. But it, then you have the Lightning down here in Tampa Bay are in it. They're, they'll be taking on the Maple Leafs in the first round. Do I expect them to win against Toronto? Probably not. This team has gone really up and down in the last three months, and they can't put a consistent win streak together. Now, one thing I will say about the Lightning is they have flipped the switch during the playoffs, so who knows? They make me, they could make me look like a, a monkey or an idiot or whatever the case may be. But the NHL playoffs, everybody knows, is probably one of the harder playoffs in all major league sports mm-hmm. because you have, what is it, the Boston Bruins. Best record the the only record that anyone and God knows that they'll, they'll ever be able to break it again. But three years ago, we saw the Lightning had the best record in the NHL going in, and they were swept out the first round. So Bruin fans, just like your Patriots, right? Don't get too comfortable in the postseason because you guys can be eliminated early and out and often. The way I see it, and Duncan that up. I'm sorry, I'm going to bring this back up. He says, "Boom! I'll be in Tampa Bay." Uh, the 18th or 25th, going to Jackie Robinson Day, game 4-2, or 421, excuse me, and uh, it's psyched. Hopefully we'll catch up when you get you come back down this way, which won't be too long from now, but a week from now. So not bad. Hopefully we'll see them. But, yeah, listen, you know, obviously with, with your Pirates, I think Ryan, they're, I think they've surprised themselves so far early on this year, if, if you really take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, they're 7-5. They're and five. Well, I don't know what the record is now. I think they uh... – just let me look at the scoreboard. They're playing the Cardinals tonight. It's 0-0 in the top of the fourth. They're 7-5. and five. Um, You know, auspicious start. Um, didn't think they'd be at 7-5 and five at this point. So, again, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see, you know, how, how that plays out. Can Look, if they finish 500 this year, I will be happy. Just don't be the worst team in baseball year in and year out. Um, McCutcheon's back. Um, I think he's going to retire a Pirate. He's on like the back side of his career now. So, you know, again, it's 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 a small market team and a lot of small market teams should Tampa Bay is the blueprint. You know, Tampa Bay has been good now for a while. They're small market, they're competitive. They just seem to do the right things every year. Um, you know, just like with the Cardinals organization, you know, you know, Car- St. Louis isn't a isn't a big market. Right. So, but that 
over the generations, the, the ownership, they, they sick money into players and, um, you know, but, but again, for some odd reason, you know, we joke about it. Pittsburgh is a farm team for the, you know, for major league baseball. Let's, let's call it what it is. They bring up people through the farm system. They get decent. And after two or three years, somebody plucks them out. They bring somebody else. They're good for two or three years. They pluck them out. So it, it would just be nice to see an owner buy the Pirates who, number one, has Pittsburgh ties. Number two, understands the culture. Right. Three, knows what the Pirates mean to the city. And then four, you know, throws all of that into, uh, the, you know, the coaching staff and the players. But for some odd reason, year in and year out, they just don't do it. So seven and five right now, after 12 games, I'll take it. You know, talk talk to me back. Talk to me in September. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll see where they're at. Hey, let, I can talk to you in two weeks to see where everybody's there at. There you go. Yeah, because we never know. You know, baseball, it, it, it's, a, it's a great thing. Listen, if you're – I will go on kind of like a little semi-rant here. For those who are baseball aficionados, and we all know this, especially – Drunk filled fans, good. Chris, he knows it. If you are just a historian, there's no reason to mess around with baseball. If you don't like to be out there for three and a half hours, four hours, bonus baseball, extra innings, I don't know what to tell you. But now they got the pitch clock. I mean, it obviously has been working, I guess. Some games have been down to two hours. Most games seems like two hours, 21 minutes, two and a half hours. The one thing I think that Major League Baseball did not think about when they were doing all this Beer sales are extremely down, and to the point now they're going into the eighth inning because the games are going by so quick. So it also makes you wonder too, for like you know, the, obviously the people who buy in the commercials, which we all know from Major League Baseball, aren't cheap. It, it really makes you wonder because now you buy all this advertisement time to you know whether it be in a mattress, car, whatever you know, auto parts, pizzas. All this money is following the Major League Baseball, but now because it, it's turning around so quick. Basically, your commercials, which might not be a bad thing, you may have to come down to five seconds because obviously when you do the warm-up, you're doing it mostly out in the outfield bullpen because once you come onto the field, I believe it's like six pitches and you're off. It wasn't like the way it was before. So it's it's. I think you should just left it the way it was. I know some people are saying they absolutely love it. They love the speed of the game. You know, some of the rule changes, it kind of makes really no sense. I wish they would have gotten rid of the extra man on base during extra innings. I think you just... If again, if God forbid it goes to the 10th inning, you don't like it, the exit is that way. Just exit out the stadium, put it in your car on the way home, leave it just the way it was. Because I'm old school. That's the way I love it. Baseball has always been my number one sport. Absolutely love it to death. But it's one of those things that sometimes you have to leave well enough alone. But it seems, I guess, and we'll see maybe halfway through the season, it'll be something completely different. I don't know what they're going to do with the All Star game because supposedly, supposedly, they may leave it old school in the All-Star game. But if the All-Star game somehow or other can make it a little more fun, it would be great. The one thing that I do like is that they finally had taken away that if you win the All-Star game, you get to win, you know, you get home field advantage. I'm glad they took that away because I thought it was the silliest thing. To me, if you're making, especially in baseball, everyone knows it's a long, grueling season. Make the All-Star game a little more fun. So when these guys are going out there, yes, you know, we, the home run derby, we get that stuff. Sometimes, you know, they've talked about before putting a, a celebrity all-star game together. Do it where the fans are really engaged because it, it shouldn't – it doesn't count, number one. But just make it more – I don't know, make it more open to the fans. Or it, it seems silly. Put it in the app somewhere and just say, okay, here's your alternative batter. Who do you guys want to see up to bat? So you might have – you know, Bryce might be up to bat, but they'll tell them, nope, we want Trout. So you, you, you the fan, will be able to go through the app and just say, nope, switch, you know – Switch batters, something where it just makes it more appealing. But everything else during the regular season, they should just left well enough alone. Well, here's the thing. You know, the fans are the ones that were complaining about that the game was too long. So they brought in the pitch clock. You know, they they brought in other things and they've tried to implement them. Yet when the pitcher goes five innings and he's up four nothing, they'll say, why is the manager taking the pitcher out? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. So, like, the, what else do you want? I, I thought for years they should come up with a rule where, you know, if you foul it off three times in a row, that's like you're done. You're done. Right. Instead of like, you know, pitches. It's 
it's a one and two count, you know, and the batter fouls it off ten times and then he gets a hit. How's that speeding up the game? I mean, you're right. not you're not really speeding up the game. So, you know, baseball continues to tinker and they can continue to screw around with it and they continue to alienate. So, you know, if everybody wants to go watch a two hour and 15 minute game and they're satisfied with that. And but fans will always find a way to, to nitpick at a sport, just like with the NFL. You know, they've sissified the game and you can't do this and you can't do that. And, you know, you can't hit guys up here and you have to hit them low. And so there's just, you know, just like with the shift, they outlawed it. I don't know why they outlawed it the hell with it. You know, if guys want to move where they want to move, right? let them move. As far as the pitch clock goes, okay, I guess I can see it. Like the NBA, you've got 20 some odd seconds to get the shot off. And then you got 10 seconds to get the next pitch off. Okay. We'll see how it works this year. I personally don't like it, but what are you going to do? So, you know, and, and if a batter really wants to mess around with a pitcher, the pitcher could like, it's like two seconds left on the clock, and he might go, no, 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 time, time, you know, adjust himself, and he could do it every time, every time if he wants to. So, you know, I'm old school like you. I like the game the way it was 30, 40 years ago. I didn't mind sitting through a three and a half hour baseball game. So, you know, we'll, and of course, after this year, they might bag something else and try to implement something else. So, again, I'm old school. I don't like change when it comes to sports a lot, unless it's like, you know, unless it really stands out to you where they have to do something. So, we'll just have to wait and see and let the year play out and then see where it stands at the end of the year. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So, well, and, and we'll see. I mean, who knows when at, at the end of the season, they're going to find out after all the data, after all the analytics, what what worked, what didn't work, and then what the fans are going to say by the end of it. And I'm pretty sure there'll, there'll be a lot of fans that say what they want by the All-Star game. And, and Major League Baseball is just going to gauge and see exactly where they are at that point. So, we'll, you know, we'll see. It's, again, long season. No need to panic. Even if your team right now is in the basement, Thankfully, the Nationals are. No offense to you Nationals fans, but thankfully, they're in the basement. We don't like Nats. We freaking swap them away anyway. So, <laughs> you guys are just as good as that DCU team, a.k.a. the Commanders. So, you're you're right where you need to be, right in the right spot here. But, no, it, listen, and we talked about a little bit. We touched earlier with the uh, with the Sixers. And, and speaking as far as basketball, for those uh, who are on tonight, and if uh, yesterday, if you end up watching the basketball league, or actually, two days ago, they made an announcement that they started now the Super Basketball League, which is going to be something incredible that's going to be done here uh, for those who are who are basketball fans because basically they've matched up now with the NBA and the G League are doing. So if you guys want to get more information as far as the Basketball Super League, you guys can go right to my website, broadestsouth.com, and then click on the basketballleague.net, and you'll be able to find out all the information and what they have coming forward as the season now gets extended from December to May along with they'll keep, continue to have the TBL season the three months from uh, March all the way through the end of May. So a lot of stuff going on. So if you guys uh, don't know, I am broadcasting partner for the TBL, but stay informed as I try to keep you guys informed all the time what's going on with the TBL. Duncan Dad says instant replay, the perfect example of what happens when a good rule becomes overused. True. So true. It, it's been used a whole ton. And we're, what, two weeks into the season? It, it has been. It, 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 that might be the first overrated. It might be used for MLB baseball with the, you know, with the instant replay. Well, and then the other thing is, you know, they keep talking about just implementing the, you know, computerized, you know, ball and strike zone. Right. And get ridding, getting rid of the guy behind the plate. I, I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. If they're going to keep the third base umpire, the first, I mean, I don't know how would they, they would work all that. Um, you know, instant replay, that doesn't bother me. You know, when I watch a game, I'm more aggravated at the fact that if you're going to be consistent with your strike zone, you need to be consistent with it. Yeah. And that's been a huge thing over the last two, three years is like umps throughout the game that are behind the plate, they are just all over the place. And you can go back and take a look at a game and see what I'm talking about. It's just, they're just way all over the place with their calls. And when you're a pitcher and a catcher and you can't figure out what the ump's trying to do and where he's trying to call stuff, 
how are you supposed to get into a groove? Well, if I hold my glove over here and I pull it in, is it going to call it? Or there's there's games within the game, and that's one of them. It's 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 just like anything else in an NBA game or an NFL game. You can tell through like half of the first period or first quarter the way the refs are going to call it. Then you can sort of like game plan around it. Okay, they're going to call it this way. This is what we need to do. So I am more aggravated with the umps than I am like the instant replay because instant replays and no, nobody's ever going to <laughs> agree when they go to instant replay. I, I've, I've seen some horrendous calls in all sports with instant replay and you're like, what are they looking at? <laughs> so that's why I feel like umps or refs in any sport should have like, you know, air pilot, you know, air force pilot or Navy pilot vision 2010 yeah, so that they can actually see what they're looking at. <laughs> yeah, well, because a couple of games this year so far, and, and it's been nuts because my producer and I, it, uh, we've been trying to catch as many games as we possibly can, but some of the balls aren't even anywhere near the strike zone. And it's almost like, I, I don't know if it's to the point where these umps just want to be like, listen, I just want to get through this game. And and as I use all the time, and I like to have fun with, just like Marshall Lynch once said, that, you know, I'm just here starting to get fine. It seems like that's what the umpires do. I'm just here to call the game. Because a couple of games we in between the Phillies and obviously my producer, her White Sox, way out the strike zone, and they're calling it a strike. Look, are you blind? Are you guys just trying to force the game out one of the two? Some of the check swings, yes. It, obviously, we've seen guys go over the plate. We know that that's notorious. And some guys, I mean, it, you just see just a flick of the bat. And the same thing, look down at first base, they call it a strike. I'm like, he barely tweaked the bat. Are you kidding me? Like it even crossed over home plate. So there, there's still just, there's so many fine tuning adjustments they have to do. And I don't even know if, if a lot of these guys go back afterwards and they watch and see what they do. You know, it, they're supposed to go back and review the games. And, and because as you're the umpiring um, team that you have is supposed to grow just like the NFL, you're supposed to grow throughout the year. And if they need to make adjustments, then they'll switch them out from, from different guys. Because obviously, then the ultimate goal for those guys is to be able to get to the playoffs and then go into the World Series. So some of these guys, you just wonder if maybe they did they miss something, you know, in between as far as school or something else, because some of it is just incredible of, of what's to be seen. But as we have a couple more minutes here left uh, here in the broadcast. But And again, I thank you, the listeners, for tuning in, especially over on Sports Radio 102.9 FM, the game. The apps are coming, folks. The apps for sports radio are coming very, very soon. They're in the development stage right now. It will be available for Android and for the app store. So that is coming soon. It's a lot of work. Lord, my brain is on overload with so much stuff that's going on in the background. Ronnie Gent could not join us tonight because his daughter, um, he has a young one, and she wasn't feeling too well, so he wanted to make sure that he took care of business at home. So Ronnie will be joining us again come next week. So if you guys don't see him up here on the screen, that's the reason why. And, and as I said earlier, in case you guys missed it, we will be live from Tampa Joe's this year. Ronnie Jen, you know, joining us, which is going to be a lot of fun. Also, we may have a surprise guest here from locally, one of the stations from 102.5 The Bone. I'll get confirmation and let you guys know if uh, one particular producer will be joining us over there again on Sunday. So it should be a lot of fun this NFL season. So uh, especially when the Eagles come into town, that's going to be a great time. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So Stay tuned for a lot of announcements coming up here momentarily. And as I said, don't forget to check out No Filter Network. Joe, Man Joe Manuel and Eric Bernsey, he, they do a fantastic job over there at No Filter Network. Please check the guys out, especially my Bleach Brothers, because all of them do some hard work over there. And it's not easy to do what we do, but we do it because we love to do it. And we bring the entertainment to you guys, the fans, and we do appreciate everyone as well. And along with everyone listening on Amp Radio, I also thank you for tuning in as I try to do a multitude of ways for you guys, not only to see us, but to hear us as well. So again, it's like smoke coming out this one ear and the fire coming out from that end because <laughs> it's a lot of work. But you know, the, the, the football season is not that far away as I guess we will end with that team that plays in DC and <laughs> You brought up earlier, Ryan, obviously Jeff Bezos, we knew that obviously he had, he had put in a bid for it and then decided to decline his bid and take it away. Um, his my, his wife, his ex-wife might have something to do with that as well because he's shelling out a lot of money there. But from what we understand, which I think, and this is going to be interesting for the Philly folks, 
I think it's going to be really interesting because I've never heard of someone that owns a particular team in a particular city to then own another team not related to the first team also in a different city. So uh, would you like to drop the hammer on everyone on who purchased the DCU team? Well, supposedly uh, this group that Josh Harris, who is the owner of the 76ers and the Devils, go figure that out. Yeah. Um, I guess the, the deal is just a shade under $6 billion. Um, Tillman Fertitta, who is the owner of the Houston Rockets, Wednesday dropped his bid offer, which is for $5.6 billion. He got out of the race. Um, and I know Jeff Bezos was still trying to explore all avenues, but it looks like the Snyders have agreed to the um, the outfit that Josh Harris has put together. So how do you own the Sixers, the Devils, and the team from D.C.? How's that going to float in Philly? <laughs> yeah, it's you, know, not. you know what I mean? I just, I mean, he's he already owns the Sixers and he owns the Devils. So right. there's bad blood there. So, I mean, more power to you. And it's like I said, in 1999, the Snyder family bought the old Redskins. You know, sorry, but that's what they were called. In 1999 for $800 million. And 24 years later, almost $6 billion. And under his regime, they were pitiful. And he's got all the scandals that came along with it. They made the playoff six times out of his 24 years. And 14 out of those 24 years, they had a losing record. So, you know, you figure that out. So, I hope the new ownership, if this gets done, they can put them back on the map. And again, Magic Johnson, I understand, is part of this deal. So, you know, they, be honest with you, they haven't been relevant for 30 years. Right. So, um, and neither have the Cowboys. So, uh, sure haven't. That, that's a, you know, Long-time Cowboy fan. I've been through all this before. I'm not going to go through it again. But uh, hopefully this new regime will, will will turn it around. Ron Rivera obviously is a great head coach. He's a good head coach. Yeah. He gets the most out of his players. And uh, we'll just have to see once this sale gets done. And I think – I can't remember what date it has to happen by or the owners have to vote on it. Of course, the owners still have to vote on it. You know, and if the owners approve it, you know, then they then they can start the ball rolling. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But when I saw that that he, the owner of the Sixers and the, the Devils is now going to be the owner owner of the Commanders, boy, I'll tell you what, that's yeah. that, that's going to be brutal. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be beyond brutal because a lot of things you're going to end up hearing is people calling to the radio stations. But that's all you're going to hear. <laughs> it's going to be a bunch of stuff that people are just going to say that she's going to have to get bleeped out because it's just, it is what it is. I, I can't, truthfully, I can't believe it because it, what's going to happen is it's just like the Cowboys fans that miraculously live in Philadelphia. When they come to town, all of a sudden there's Cowboys fans all over Philadelphia. It's going to be the same way now that if this deal goes through, all of a sudden all these DCU fans that are closet fans that live in Philly will now show up to the Sixers games like, well, your owner's our owner. Okay, well, listen, whatever, Hoss. Let that well, sing in for a little bit. And I want to get – go ahead. <laughs> to say, imagine if Jeffrey Lurie owned the Eagles and then put a bid in for the Penguins. <laughs> you know no. what I mean? It doesn't no. make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I would have to listen, I would have to come to Jeffrey Lurie. We'd have to pick up <laughs> Fuji so he can go talk to Howie Roseman. And everybody would just show up at his house and say, listen, no, this is not going to happen. So – no, that's all right. I'm good. But uh, anyways, we'd like to wrap up the show here tonight. We appreciate everyone once again to tune in. And uh, by the way, I'm going to get together with Duncan Dad and the Bleacher Brothers. Because Ryan, I would like to have – you brought up a good point with, you know, obviously the Redskins being called the team name for years ago. The same way about the Indians and everything else. So I would like to get together with the Bleacher Brothers one night and, and have just a fun segment upon what are people's actual true feelings about all these teams and getting their names changed and stuff like that. So we'll bring that up. I'll reach out to Duncan Dad and, and we'll put that together. But I also like to thank our sponsors, Tampa Joe's over there, 9316 Anderson Road in beautiful Tampa, Florida, which tonight, for all you Swifty fans, <laughs> uh, yes, Taylor Swift is here for the next three nights. And I, you know, I already hear it. It's all over the all over the place. And I'm pretty sure she's loving it because she's nice and warm. So you Swifty fans, Taylor Swift is here 
for the next three nights. So uh, if she would like to stop by here in the studio, I'd you know, be more than happy to talk to her about sports. But <laughs> so she's here. Uh, obviously, for Philly sports trips, <clears throat> Vince Rizzuto and crew, we t- can't thank them enough. For every time they come down here in Florida, they always take care of us as much as we like to take care of them. So always check them out. You can also go through the website right through our site at broadstsouth.com. Check out all the latest trips and travel with the pros with Philly sports trips, along with, again, thanks to Duncan Dan and the Bleacher Brothers over there at No Filter Network. And for my producer over at Studio B, for my co-host, Ryan Neff, I'm Angel Martinez. Thank you for tuning in to episode 133, 183, excuse me, and also to Michael Barkan, which my co-host screwed things up in the very beginning, but you'll be able to watch the entire replay. <laughs> I'm going to blame you because you did it. <laughs> but anyways, everyone, enjoy your weekend. We will see you all next week.